G'day kids, thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Aussie here. This is gonna be so much fun today because we've come along to a place called Carmsley Hill City Farm. And today we're gonna to learn all about koalas. That's right, koalas have to be one of the most iconic Australian animal. And today we're gonna to get up close and personal and hopefully we'll even get a chance to touch one. Now this is where they live kids. So come and join me. Let's get inside and go and meet some. How exciting is this? Hey Ozzy! Hey, I'm Ozzy, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, I'm Jess. Jess. And most importantly, this handsome guy is Jasper. Isn't he just so beautiful? He is, he's just waking up from a nap. Hello Jasper, it's nice to meet you. fall back asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of sleep, right I believe these guys do a lot of sleeping, is that right? Yeah, they sleep about 18 to 20 hours every single day. That's a lot of sleep. I know, that's now, a lot of sleep. Why do they need so much sleep? Well, the leaves that they eat, so you can see this is everything that Jasper ate yesterday. Ah. So he doesn't eat these big leaves. He likes to eat the nice fresh ones. So there's only a few left that okay. he hasn't stacked on. Little ones. Yeah, and these leaves, they're full of water. So there's not much energy in them. There's not much nutrition. So it's kind of like if all you ever ate was lettuce. You're going to be pretty tired. Very tired. And you're going to sleep. Yeah. So you've got to have a few less lollies and then you might have a better sleep. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'd like to sleep that long. Okay, so what kind of leaves are these? So these are eucalyptus leaves. Okay. So you might have seen a eucalyptus tree in your backyard, uh -huh, yes. the path, yep. yeah? So there's about 800 different types of eucalypt and koalas eat about 50 to 60 of them. Wow. So they're pretty fussy and what they eat depends on where they grew up. Okay. So koalas that grow up in Queensland, they eat different food to koalas that live in South Australia. There you go. Yeah, and they like different things as well. And even our koalas that we have here, Jasper, he likes more things than his big brother next door. So Does he? His big brother is fussy. He's super fussy. He's a better eater than his brother. Oh, very good. Yep. Now, um, how much of this, this eucalyptus leaf would they eat every day? About a kilo. A kilo? Yeah. That's a lot of leaves. It's a lot of leaves. And yeah. that's why they sleep a lot, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they need to eat lots of leaves because they get no energy from the leaves. Yep. They have to eat heaps to get enough energy to be able to be a koala. Ah, <laughs> absolutely. So all that energy is used to digest their food. Yeah, and looking for leaves. So Jasper, he's pretty lucky and I, he gets delivery every day. I bring him his food. He doesn't have to worry about wow. looking for food. But out in the wild, the koalas need to move from tree to tree to find food. And that might be pretty far because there's not as many eucalyptus trees around as there used to be. Right. So koalas have to walk a lot further to find food than they ever used to. Yeah. So speaking of those trees not being uh, around as much as they used to, is that from things like fires and stuff? Fires and us. Koalas, they live all along the east coast of Australia, which is where most of Australians live. Right. So they're competing with us for their homes. So when we chop down their trees, we're chopping yeah. down their food source and their homes. And their water. Because koalas water. get everything that they need to drink from their leaves as well. Really? Yeah. They don't just have a drink bottle that they nah. have a sip of during the day. Yeah. They eat the leaves and all the water comes yeah. from that. Yeah. So they really are fussy. Yeah. They don't need much apart from eucalyptus leaves and that's their diet. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, so that one tree is really, really important Very to a koala. Important. So <laughs> what can humans do to, to be more mindful of the koala's natural yeah. habitat, their home and their food source, and making sure that we give them what they need so that they can survive for many, many years to come. Yeah, if you have a big backyard, you can plant koala food trees in your backyard that might have used to have been there. So a lot of local councils will sometimes give away koala food trees, especially in areas where there is a local koala population to help them out. That's great. Yeah, it's so great that they do that. 
And also, if you live somewhere where there's koalas and you like to take your dog for a walk out in the bush, you should always have your dog on a lead. Okay. They can hurt a koala pretty badly if they came across one. Yeah, and we don't want that to happen. Definitely not. They aren't very good at crossing the road. They never look both ways. Wow. So. Road safety rules. Come yeah. on, koalas. So sometimes they get hit by cars. If that does happen, it's always important to pull over and check if the koala's okay. You could yeah. always take it to a vet yeah. nearby if you could. Or if the koala didn't make it, you can check if it's a girl, if it's got a baby inside its pouch. Okay. And you can take the baby to a vet or to a local wildlife group and they know how to look after those guys. They can raise them up and then they can release them back into the wild. That's great. Yeah. That's a great program. Yeah. So you mentioned there that the um, female koalas have a pouch. Yeah. I know they're not a reptile, but what kind of uh, an animal is a koala? They're a marsupial. All right. Like a kangaroo. Wombat, of course. wallaby, yeah. And that's so why they have the pouch. They sure do. And they use the pouch to keep the new koalas they're, inside? They're lollies. Lollies? They're lollies. They're, they're leaves? They're, no, they're babies. No, kids. They're babies, of course. <laughs> they're babies. And baby koalas called a joey. Ah, oh, joey. And Just like how, a kangaroo. Yeah. And do you know how big they are when they're born? That has to be pretty small, right? Yeah, so they've got to fit in that pouch. They're the size of a jelly bean. A jelly bean. So they do keep their lollies in their they pouches. They do keep their lollies in their pouches. Very good. <laughs> so a tiny little jelly bean. And mum's only pregnant for about 30 to 35 days. Oh, that's quick. Yeah, she gives birth to a little baby that's no bigger than her poo. And it crawls up her tummy and puts itself in her pouch. Wow. So she'll sit really still. She'll lick all of the fur, so it's facing in one direction. And the baby follows the scent of the milk up into her pouch. She's got those big sharp claws, remember? She can't pick up a jelly bean and pop it in there. Yeah, She's gonna course. hurt her joey. Yeah. So she just sits nice and still. The joey climbs in there and there's teats in there. So the joey grabs onto one of those teats, it swells up inside their mouth and all they do is drink milk for the wow. next few months. And we, they don't come out till they're six months old. Six months old and then when they come out, they're ready to go and was, munch straight into the eucalyptus ooh, leaves. Not just Not yet. quite, okay, not what's the next yet. step? It's a little bit gross. So their mum is going to do a really special poo okay. called a pap. Ooh, and wow. the joey is going to stick its head out of the pouch, go to mum's bottom and it's going to eat mum's poo. Okay. So in that poo, there's lots of good bacteria right. and it helps their tummy to be ready to eat eucalyptus leaves. Amazing. Yeah. Because I hear that eucalyptus leaves are, are they poisonous? Yeah, they're pretty toxic to koalas. We can't drink eucalyptus oil and it makes the, can make the koalas quite sick as wow. well. So that's why they eat these leaves, the fresh ones, because uh, they've got so much water in them. Okay. These older ones have more eucalyptus oil in right. them. So they stay away from those ones and eat the younger ones. They're certainly very cute. Now, is it possible for Ozzy to touch him? Of course you can, Ozzy. So if you just reach around and give him a scratch on his back. Oh, hello. He's even waking up to say hello. Hello, Jasper. They are very, very soft, so they are just as soft as they look. Yeah, they're pretty soft. A little bit coarse. Do you think it feels a little it bit does. rough? It does, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he hasn't washed his hair for a while. No, <laughs> never has, never. And being a boy, he has a scent gland on his chest as okay. well. So he's only young, so his scent gland isn't that big just yet, but as he gets more and more mature, he gets bigger. Now, I was just touching his very, very soft, cuddly looking fur there, but I noticed his claws which are hiding under there, they don't look so cuddly. No, they're they pretty look super sharp, sharp, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Now, how many of those do they have on their so, hands and feet? So, he has this makeup, like we do, so he's got five digits, but the, he doesn't have a pointer finger. Okay. Instead of having a pointer finger, he has an extra thumb. Oh, two thumbs? Yeah, so he's got these th fingers, just like us, yep. and then these two are thumbs. Two thumbs. Because what do koalas spend all their time doing? Where do they live? Up the trees, right? Up the trees. Yeah, okay. So do you think if you could hold on with two fingers on this side, are you going to be really good at climbing? Going to make you a very yeah. good climber. Really good climbing. So two thumbs combined with those giant big claws, are going to be an awesome climber. Perfect. Yeah. So they can get right to the top of the tree, stay out of way of predators, yeah. and find the best leaves to yeah. eat. Yeah. Stay up nice and cool as nice well. Nice and cool. Yeah. Of course. Their fur, it feels really thick. Yeah. Does that keep them warm in the winter? Yeah. It keeps them warm in winter and also helps to keep them dry when they get rained on. It's waterproof. Yeah. So they've got an inbuilt raincoat. Yeah. And all that eucalyptus oil that they're eating, but it's not very good for them, it's all in their coat. Right. So it helps to keep the water off them Perfect. as well. He's very, very cute. And I think that I would love to have one as a pet. Do you think that I can take one home and keep no, it as a pet? No, you definitely wouldn't want to have no. a koala as a pet. And you're no. not allowed to either. You're not allowed to. But some, okay. people Sorry, are, kids. some people are lucky enough that they have wild ones living in their backyards. Wow. Now, Jasper is a beautiful koala. And I saw that you've got another one over there. 
which looks just as beautiful. It's a little bit bigger, but how do you, they're all gray, right? How do you tell them apart? Yeah. Well, so the easiest way with these two at the moment is their size, but pretty soon Jasper is gonna grow up to be the same size as his brother. The easiest way to tell them apart is their nose. Jonah next door, he's got pink patches all over his nose, right. and they've got different colors on their bottoms right. as well, different spots and markings. Okay, Yeah. so you get to understand what the different spots and markings yeah. are, and, and then you can tell them apart. Yeah. And are they all gray out in the wild? Ah, that's a good question. So up in Queensland, they're much lighter in colour. Okay. And down in Victoria, they're much darker and they're, they're even closer to being a brown. Wow. In colour. Yeah, and, and they're bigger and fluffier. Okay. And is, has that got anything to do with the weather and the temperature? Yeah, it gets colder in Victoria, yep. especially during winter. So if you're bigger, you're going to be able to maintain more heat. Up in Queensland, it gets much hotter and you're yep. going to be lighter in colour. You're not going to absorb as much sun. That's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So, Ozzy, it sounds like Jasper's lunch, breakfast, and dinner is all here. Lucky Do Jasper. Do you, you want to help me feed him? Oh, I'd love to. Yeah, so I'm going to pick up Jasper. Okay. And then if you can grab out the old food. Yeah, just so, pick him up. Well, you can just grab, grab out the branches. You can okay. leave the pot there. Okay. So this is the safest way for me to pick him up. Super bear. Go, okay, hi. So you can see he's not that big just yet. No. He's so he's only small, a year he? and a half. Hello, cutie. You ready for some new food? Ozzy's here to help you. <laughs> Ozzy's here to feed you some new food. I think we'll put him over here. All right, and where does this go? So just outside. Freshly delivered eucalyptus leaves. Yeah, he's tucking in, he's picked which one he wants to eat. So Jasper had a bit of a sniff of all of the leaves first right. before he decided which one he wanted to eat. Sometimes they'll even sample a few different ones and yep. then go and pick one and tuck themselves in. There's about 800 types of eucalyptus. That's a lot. So remember how to tell them all apart was a bit tricky, so I had to learn their different bark and the different leaf shape and yeah, all okay. different things. Jasper, he just goes by their smell. So if he likes it, he'll eat it. If he doesn't like the smell, for a snack? It looks tasty, Yeah. <laughs> but it's toxic, so I'm not <laughs> going to go there. <laughs> but they, um, so the koalas, their mums will teach them what types of leaves they like and which ones they don't. That's cool. Yeah. So I've just grabbed two different leaves from yep. the two different bunches here, and that's two different types of eucalyptus tree. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Jasper's big brother, Jonah, yep. does he like the same eucalyptus? He's a little bit fussier. Wow. He used to love this certain type of tree, and then one day he just decided, no, nope, don't like that anymore. No, gone off that? Yeah. But his brother loves it. There you go. Loves it. All right. Well, speaking we can go of... see what he's eating I'd if you like. I'd love to go and meet yeah. Jonah. Right, yeah. let's go, kids. Jonah, oh, Ozzy. Wow. Hello, Jonah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. You can see how, how much nice... bigger he is. Yes. So he, I was going to say, he's heaps bigger than Jasper. How old is Jonah? So he's three. He's three, and Jasper was one and a half, right? Yeah. Wow. So Jasper's got a lot of growing to do in the next year. Sure and a half. does. And is Jonah fully grown? He'll get even bigger. Bigger? Yeah. He's going to put on more weight. So he's about seven kilos at the moment. Okay. And he'll probably get up to eight, maybe even nine. But boys can get as big as 12 kilos. 12 kilos? Yeah. It's a big koala. Big koala. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so he's can... eating um, the same eucalyptus leaves? So or... he's got the same ones today, but I think he's picked a different one to snack on first. Okay. So you can, as we said, they've all got their favourites that they like to eat. So. And these are the white markings you were mentioning before. Yeah, and even just up here, he's much lighter in yeah, colour. He is. Yeah. So 
So I noticed just when you walked in that Jonah actually touched you on the nose with his nose. Yeah. Is that because you guys are, are really close and you're mates? Yeah, so koalas, they'll greet each other and koalas that they know by touching noses. So they don't have a very good eyesight. So I can see you and say, hey, Aussie. Yeah. But Jonah, he probably can't see me from that far away. So when I come in, he'll have a bit of a touch of my nose and that way he knows that it's me and it's my smell. So it's really special that they do that That's a us. very special connection to have yeah. with such a beautiful animal like this. You're very lucky. I'm so what lucky. What a job you have. Kids, yeah. can you imagine doing this for a job? Jess has a dream job. Pretty good. It's very good, very cool. Now, I read somewhere the meaning of koala. Can you remind me what koala actually means? So it's an Aboriginal word from an Aboriginal dialect and it means no drink, because they don't drink water. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. So Jonah looks very comfortable here. Looks like he's found some very, very tasty leaves. How long will he sit in this position just munching on those leaves? So he'll probably eat for about 20 minutes, half an hour. Then he's okay. gonna go back to sleep. Yep. Yeah. And will he sleep in that position? Yeah, he will. He'll just curl up in a little ball, tuck his head in and have so a nap. So he doesn't have a pillow or anything. He just, just sits there yeah. and just sleeps. Yep. I've learned a lot today, and I think it's probably time that I get out of here and let Jonah just munch on his leaves there. But Jess, I can't thank you enough for sharing all your knowledge and information about these beautiful little animals with Ozzy and the kids out there. Kids, I hope you've loved it. Thanks again for having me here. No problem, Ozzy. Kids, if you want to come along and meet this little guy, Carnsley Hill City Farm is where you'll find him, and hopefully you'll see him as active as this. Kids, hope you've enjoyed learning lots about these beautiful animals, the amazing koala, We'll see you on the next video, and until then, stay keen. G'day kids, thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out, and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours, and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Aussie here. Today we've come along to Wildlife Sydney Zoo, and we're going to learn all about one of Australia's most iconic animals. Now, can you guess what it might be? That's right kids, it's Australia's national icon, the kangaroo. Now we're going to meet some of these unique and very impressive animals and find out just what it is that makes them so awesome. So come on kids, let's hop to it. Come this way kids. So it looks like it's feeding time for the kangaroos. And I'm gonna go in there and meet Morgan and meet some kangaroos. How cool is this gonna be? <laughs> Hello, Morgan. Hi, Ozzy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, thank you for coming. So we've got some awesome little hoppy friends here. Yeah. Now, what kind of kangaroos are these? So these guys are Western Grey kangaroos, but there's two different kinds. So we have Kangaroo Island kangaroos, which is this one here, and we've got the mainland kangaroos from All right. the grey species. Okay, so how do you tell the difference between the two different types? Hello. There's not too much difference between them. Um, I'd say visually, the only big thing is more so their fur's a little bit thicker. Okay. Because um, it gets a little bit colder on Kangaroo Island. Right. And they're a little bit darker as well. So okay. you can see Dot here and Dusk, who's this one in the middle here. Both of those girls are a little bit darker than the okay. other two. So they've got names. This is Dot and this is Dusk, yeah? Yes. And what are the other three names? So we've got Kirby, nice. who's right in front here. And then you've got Julie, and you've got Nutmeg as well. Very yeah. cool names. Who gets to name them? Is that something that you get to do as part of your job here? Um, so two of them are hand raised. So nothing. we named them when they were very, very young. Okay. Um, but the other three actually came with other names. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. 
Is there other types of kangaroos around Australia? Yeah, so there's three main types of kangaroos in Australia. So you have these guys. Um, so these guys you only find on the south and west coast of Australia. Okay. And then you've got the big red kangaroos, which live in the centre of Australia. Right. They're a little bit different. They're a lot bigger and their fur is usually that really red kind of colour that right, a lot okay. of people see in kangaroos. Yep. And then you've got our eastern greys, which live on this side of Sydney. Okay. They're a little bit bigger and their fur is a lot lighter grey as well. Okay. And the fur's a lot thinner as well because it doesn't get as cold. Where, where Fair from. enough. That's very clever, isn't it? Yeah. Now, um, are these are these kangaroos fully grown? Yes, they are okay. all fully grown. So our heaviest is this one who's trying to get the food out of my pocket. Her name is Dot and she is about 27 kilos. 27 kilos, yeah. okay. Um, but that's typical size for a female. A male yeah. can get a lot bigger. So okay. the boys can get probably about double her weight. Wow. Yeah, so a lot bigger. And which type of kangaroos are the biggest kangaroos? The biggest kangaroos are the red kangaroos. The reds? Yes. And how big can they get? Um, so the biggest one that has been recorded recently, his name was Roger and he Roger. lived in the, um, lived over in Alice Springs. Okay. And he, when he stood up, he was six foot eight. So he was a very, very big boy. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Now what are you feeding the kangaroos there? So we are feeding them sweet potato. Would sweet like potato, I'd them? love to. Now who wants some sweet potato? I'd say all of them. <laughs> Now, sweet potato, is that something that they would commonly find uh, in and around Australia? Or do they um, eat other things? Not specifically. So the sweet potato is a little bit of a treat for them. Um, so we use it for their training and when they get to meet people. It's also very good for their teeth. Okay. Um, but these guys out in the wild, they'd eat a lot of grasses. They'd eat a lot of leaves that are formed from trees. Um, they've also eaten a lot of roots and stuff from the ground as okay. well as bark as well. Wow. Um, so we give them similar stuff here so they can eat anything that falls from the ground from all of our trees. Um, they also get hay at all times and these guys they also get grass tussocks oh, wow. given to them as Look well. Quite a varied diet. Yes, and these guys, they're a grazing species, so right. they don't have a breakfast, lunch, and dinner like right. we do. Um, these guys actually eat at any time during the so day. all through the day? Yeah. Like cows? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, how old are these girls? So, all of the girls vary between three and eight years old. So, the one that you're giving a pat to, she's three. She okay. only just turned three last week. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and then our oldest is Julie, who's this one here, okay. and she's eight years old. Oh wow, okay. Um, but that doesn't mean she's in charge though. So right. Dot, who is this one in front of me, she's the one in she's charge. She's the leader? Yeah, but she's only six. Right. But she's been here the longest and she's the biggest, which okay. means she's the one in charge of the mob. She's the So a mob, you said mob, is yes. that what it's called when they're, they're a group of kangaroos? Yeah, that's what a group of kangaroos is called, okay. is a mob. A mob, I like it, that's mm. very cool. What's a baby a kangaroo called? So it's called a joey. Okay. Yeah, so all marsupials, which is what these guys are, right. um, all their babies are called joeys. All right. Yeah, so what they do, um, when the um, mum gets pregnant, she's only pregnant for about 30 days, which is not a wow. long time at all. That's super quick. Yeah, so what that means though, is when they're born, they're very, very little, and they're right. very underdeveloped. So right. they're kind of about the size of a jelly bean. Wow, they're that is tiny. Yeah, they're completely pink. They've got no fur or anything like that. Their eyes are completely sealed and they've only got their forearms. Right. Yeah. So no tail, no legs? Nothing. Yeah, so wow. what these guys will do, um, they do have a really good sense of smell. Okay. So they need to smell their way into mum's pouch. Wow. Yeah, so mum will usually lick a pathway all the way over to the pouch so they can crawl up that way. Um, and what they need to do once they get into the pouch is attach themselves to a teat that's in there. Yep. And they'll stay in there for another couple of months. Wow. Um, until they start looking kind of like what a kangaroo should look like. Yep. Um, just pretty much without the fur. Okay. Um, and then once they're about, typically about nine months old, that's when they'll start kind of coming out and exploring a little bit more. Okay. And by the time they're a year old, they're completely out of the pouch full time. Okay. Um, they still need to hang out with mum for a little bit just so they can learn how to be a kangaroo and yeah. do all that kind of okay. stuff. Yeah, of course. Um, but typically from about a year and a half old, they're completely independent. Wow. Yeah, it's very, very cool. That's amazing. Now, are any of these girls uh, going to have babies? Um, not anytime soon. Right. Um, so we don't have any males in here. Okay. It's all girls out right. of our group. So we're not expecting anything anytime soon. Um, but if they did have a baby, it would be sitting in their pouch. Right. Um, so none of them look like they've got a big pouch at the moment. Yeah. So they don't need to worry about that. Hello. 
So I'll show you where their pouch lives. I'm yeah, dust so I'm fascinated by the pouch. I would love to know how it works and it looks cuddly in there for the newborns and the babies. Yeah, so you want, I'll get her to stand up. So their pouch lives just here. Okay. Yeah, so just on there. Okay. Now a lot of people think like it's a big pocket that yeah. goes across their stomach. It's actually not the case at all. It's kind okay. of like a belly button. Wow. that can expand um, when there's a joey inside. That's fascinating. Yeah, so these guys, if they're hopping around, they can get really, really fast sometimes. Um, and if they're running away from something and it's a big pocket in front of their stomach, the baby's gonna fall out. Yeah. So what they do is they have it nice and tight and sealed, so that way the baby's not gonna fall out if they've gotta hop away anywhere. Very, very clever, isn't it? Yeah. So when you say, uh, when you speak of them hopping, how fast can these kangaroos hop? Um, not too fast. I'd say around probably about 30 kilometers an hour, okay. right at full speed. Yeah, that's um, which, this type of kangaroo, is it? Yeah, so um, the reds typically get a little bit faster, yeah. um, but they're not the fastest mammal in Australia that belongs to the wombat. Wombats are faster than kangaroos? Yeah. Now there's a fun fact I didn't know. <laughs> wonder if any of the kids at home knew. Did you know that, kids? <laughs> and how high can these um, kangaroos hop? Um, they actually can't jump very high, um, but they can can jump really long. Right. So the longest hop that they can do is typically about five meters long. Wow. Yeah. Where if they were going height wise, they'd probably still be pretty high, but they'd get probably to about my hip. Okay. Yeah. That's still pretty high. Yeah. So they're not going to make very good high jumpers. No. But they would make good long jumpers in the Olympics. Definitely. So maybe we should put a, an Aussie jersey on one of you girls <laughs> and send you off to the Olympics, hey? Oh, this one would love it. <laughs> Well, she certainly loves a pat. Yeah, so Dot is one of our hand-raised kangaroos. Okay, and is yeah. that why she's so placid and, and very comfortable with me, like, even holding her yes, hand there? Yes, she loves people holding her hands. We don't know where she got it from. That's amazing. Yeah, but Dot was found when she was about four months old. Okay. Um, she was in her mum's pouch, right. um, and unfortunately, um, her parents got into car collisions. Oh, no. Um, so a very good person over on Kangaroo Island um, checked the pouch and they found Dot, and um, they called Wires. Right. And those are the people who take care of injured wildlife or orphaned wildlife and um, they took care of her for a little bit and then she came to us when she was six months old. And you've raised her since then. Yes. And, and she, she loves it here. Yeah, and she turned six last week. Oh, happy oh, birthday. Oh, not last week, last month. Happy birthday. Yeah. For any of the viewers at home, the kids mm -hmm. and the, the parents and even for people coming from overseas, mm -hmm. if you see a kangaroo in the wild, are they likely to be this friendly? Can you go up and just pat them and feed them um, sweet potato in the wild? Um, it's very unlikely. So these girls, because Dot and Dust, they were hand raised, they're very, very friendly. Yep. And these ones have been around us since for about a year now, so they're very placid. Okay. Um, but out in the wild, they're typically not going to be as friendly. They're probably going to be a bit more scared of you. Right. Um, so they'll probably run away pretty fast. Um, but if they, if you do ever go see a kangaroo, um, never walk up to them at the front because that's where all the dangerous stuff is. Right, so okay. these guys, they have two very, very strong legs, and if they do feel threatened, what they're gonna do is kick. Right. Yeah, which is quite scary, um, and it does, it is quite painful. So with these guys, um, if you do ever want to approach one, approach them from the back. Okay, Yeah. that's good to know. So how do they, they've only got two legs that are on the ground at the moment, how do they use them to kick? So they actually have a really, really strong tail. You can see Dot's one just here. Yeah. So it's actually completely made of muscle and bone. It's wow. very, very strong. Um, and if they want to, they can actually hold their entire body weight on it. On their tail? Yeah. That's it's really, impressive. Really, really cool. So if they were to kick, what they're going to do is just step up on their tippy toes, get really, really high. They'll lean all the way back and kick out with both. Lean back on their tail and kick out like that. Yeah, and that's what kangaroo kickboxing is. Kickboxing, yeah, yeah. the boxing kangaroo. <laughs> and do they use their hands as well? Um, not really. So what they'll do is kind of just wave them around. Right. Yeah, it looks a little bit silly, but it seems to work for them. They do have quite sharp claws as well. They're, okay. um, they're beautiful and amazing animals, and they're certainly very unique to Australia. Yes, definitely. Very proud to call these animals part of uh, our culture. Yes. Um, have you got any more fun facts for the kids at home? So fun fact for our kangaroos is there's actually three times the amount of kangaroos in Australia than there is people. Wow. So they outnumber us three to one. That is a lot of kangaroos, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> these beautiful kangaroos, they're, they're such a unique animal to Australia, aren't they? Yes, they and, are. And lots of tourists come along um, to visit and, and see these 
kangaroos up close and personal. Yes, they do. Can you find kangaroos anywhere else in the world though? Not particularly. So these type of kangaroos, absolutely not. Yep. We only have them in Australia. Um, but there is one kind of macropod which is called a tree kangaroo. Okay. Um, and those guys, um, we do have some in Australia, but there's also some that live in Papua New Guinea. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's called a Goodfellows tree kangaroo. We actually have one here at the zoo. His and they live up Kofi. the trees? Yeah, they live up in trees. So those guys typically stay all the way up high where it's wow. nice and safe. Yeah. And their tails are a lot longer so okay. they can balance themselves a lot better. Very clever, very clever. Now, um, I know that we have the kangaroo and the emu on the Australian coat of arms. Yes, we do. But can you tell me why we've chosen those two animals as uh, a representation of Australia and why we would have them on our coat of arms? Mm. So the main reason for both of them is neither of them can walk backwards. Wow. Yeah, so what that means in the coat of arms is that we're always moving forward, never How backwards, clever. which is a really, really cool thing. That's amazing, yeah. very, very clever. Yeah. Now I have learned so much here today, so thank you so much for having me here at Wildlife Sydney Zoo. Of course. For all our visitors that want to come along, and they're in Sydney, um, do they just come along? Can they come in here and, and pat the kangaroos? So what you can do if you want to come into our kangaroo area is you just stick along the pathway, you walk all the way through, and our girls love people, so they'll come over and oh, say hello. Right. So they come over and meet the, yeah, the and guests as they arrive at the ropes. Yes, and they love for to give them pats and everything like that. They're very, very much excited to meet people. Awesome. Well, thank you so much yeah. for having me here today. Awesome. Thank you for coming. It's been a great experience. I'm sure the kids at home have learnt lots. Mm -hmm. Kids, I hope you feel inspired to come along and learn more about kangaroos. Get up close and personal and pat them. They're super soft mm -hmm. and they're awesome, awesome animals. We'll see you on the next video. And until then, stay keen. Mm -hmm. Hey kids, thanks for tuning in to another Aussie episode. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that way you won't miss out on any of the new videos we put out and it would certainly make my day. In the meantime, enjoy this video. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours and he's a friend of mine. G'day kids, Ozzy here. Today we've come along to Canberra Reptile Zoo and we're gonna learn all about these guys here. That's right, today's episode is all about crocodiles. Now they've got a few different types inside. They've got a big one named Charlie. They've also got some smaller crocs and I'm gonna get a chance to hold one. Yes, that's right kids, that's what I said. Ozzy is gonna hold a crocodile. I'm a little bit nervous of course, but I'm also super excited. I can't wait to get inside. So come on, let's snap to it. All right, kids, so I've come inside and look who I've found straight away. This is Charlie, and Charlie is the big croc that lives here. But guess who else I've found? I've found Peter. Peter, Hi, thanks mate. for having us. That's right, you're welcome. How so, you doing? I'm very good. Now, Peter uh, runs the place here at uh, Canberra Reptile Zoo. Well, so, actually, I sorry, I have to correct you on that. The animals actually run the place here. I just <laughs> run around making sure they don't run us, that's all. Very yeah. good, <laughs> very good. So, Peter is the man to talk to when it sure. comes to crocs. So, yeah. I did mention his name, Charlie. Charlie. Why Charlie? Well, actually, we inherited Charlie, and he came with his name and everything else. So okay. Charlie is, uh, when he came to us, he was an eight-year-old uh, saltwater crocodile that okay. was an ex-educational um, uh, crocodile right. and looking for a permanent home. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So he was eight when you got him. How old is he yes, now? Yes, he was. Oh, he'd be 18 now. So, and he's grown 
considerably more than when we got him. When we got him, I remember a photograph of me holding him in my hands. I can't do that now. He's yeah. well over 100 kilos now, so a lot heavier than me and definitely not something I'd go picking up. Yeah, I don't, I don't imagine <laughs> no, that no. you'd want to get too close to Charlie. No, definitely not. Um, Charlie is, a, is, you said before, is a saltwater crocodile. Yep. I would say probably one of the most dangerous reptiles we have in Australia. Okay. Uh, not because they cause the most amount of injuries or death or anything, but because I believe they're the, one of the very few animals, or the, probably the only animal we have, that would actively try to eat a person. Wow. So most reptiles, uh, um, snakes, people can be afraid of them, and snakes usually fight and bite defensively. Um, crocodiles know what you are and they don't care. Okay, you know, they, your just food. Like, they just like oh, meat. Yeah. Yeah, very and much the so. The person is meat. <laughs> yes, we are. So, and they're not afraid of us. Absolutely. No, they're not I afraid of us. I don't imagine they would be. I mean, look at that, yeah. that scary snout and those sharp teeth and those sharp claws. Now, just speaking of those claws, Peter, yes. I noticed that Charlie is missing a claw. He is. Yes, uh, he what is. What happened there? Um, well, look, that was just uh, just uh, something that was the way Charlie was born. It was just the way it didn't grow out. So okay. he hasn't actually physically lost it. Right. It just hasn't grown. Okay. So like in humans, things like that can happen with them sometimes. Um, unlike his teeth. So with his teeth, that's completely different. Yep. Um, a crocodile can go through over a thousand teeth in their lifetime. Wow. So they keep growing new teeth regardless of their age. It's not like us where we lose our baby teeth yeah. and that's the end of it. Yeah. With these guys, those teeth come out, they just keep on going. So, uh, which handy. is lucky for them because if they lose their teeth, then they're pretty harmless after that. Yeah, mm. right. And I yeah. imagine uh, they'd need those teeth to rip through those big, uh, the big chunks of meat that you mm -hmm. feed them. Very much so. One of the interesting things about crocodiles people don't realise is they don't actually not very good at chewing. Okay. Actually, so when it comes to eating, they don't come up to their food and usually go chomp, 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 chomp and chew through their food. Right. They normally grab their food if it's small enough. Their jaw is so powerful, um, they'll crush it. So for him, it might be a chicken, he'll just crush it down wow. small enough to swallow it whole. If it's big, then what he'll actually do is he'll grab that thing and he'll actually sh t take a chunk right. by using his body weight. So he'll grab it and he'll actually shake or roll. Right. So, and that's why they need those teeth, because while they're grabbing food and they're frantically shaking away, they're often losing teeth. Wow. And they have to grow back, otherwise these guys end up, again, not being able to eat, basically. Right, mm. absolutely fascinating. Yeah. You mentioned chicken. Yes, They I obviously did. love a bit of chicken. They what do else? love their chicken. What else? Um, well, they're, they're, they're carnivorous, and they basically target things that, that, that are easy for them to eat. So as they go through their life cycle, their diet changes. So when okay. they're young, they tend to eat um, fish and frogs and small lizards and uh, as they get bigger they move on to larger food items including each other right uh, and they will also move on to eating um, s smaller or bigger fish and then they'll if a large saltwater crocodile could crush a turtle wow. a smaller one couldn't okay uh, eventually when they're fully grown or when they get to about the size of Charlie here pretty much everything's fair game okay. wallabies kangaroos but they don't like to expel a lot of energy chasing their food. Oh, they're lazy. So, yeah, lazy they're characters. very lazy. Okay. Very lazy because if they overexert themselves, they can actually get sick from that. Right. So when they hunt, they generally do it very quietly and very slowly. Okay. So they tend to target food that necessarily doesn't realize they're coming. Okay. That's why, even though I said they can eat people, they generally don't. Right. As, as That's humans, a good thing to know. Yeah, as humans, we know that logs shouldn't have eyeballs. Right. So when we see a log floating towards us with an eyeball against the current, we don't generally stand yeah. around there and poke it. Yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, but having said that, they are very, very cunning when it comes to hunting and their entire body is designed to conceal themselves underwater. Yeah, right. So when you're living in the north of Australia, because that's really the only place you've got to worry about them, okay. uh, you do have to be what they call croc wise and that's where you've got to be aware of where they live and you stay away from those areas and normally there are big warning signs. Okay. Um, so they tell you a lot of that when you go into northern parts of Australia okay. about being croc wise. So for our guy, um, we do feed him chickens, okay. as I said, that's probably the easiest, cheapest food. Um, generally what happens is um, we feed him food that's been pre-prepared, okay. it's easy for him to swallow. Yeah. Uh, and it's made up mostly of chicken and stuff like that. Yeah, okay. Mm. Now, you mentioned that these guys are only found in the wild up north. Whereabouts are we finding these things? Oh, now, when I say up north, that can include northern parts of Queensland. Okay. Um, so you can come all the way down um, Queensland. I, I couldn't be specific about exactly where, yep. but it's uh, mostly up around Darwin and the Northern okay. Territory. Very common in those areas. Cool. So if we're going, for a, if we're going for a walk around Sydney or in Melbourne, yeah. we're not likely. Nope. To run into one of these no guys. you're definitely not no no, no you're not unless someone lost one as a pet right okay because I, I will say each state is very very different in the way they treat these animals okay uh, and in some states like Victoria some people can even own these animals as pets wow in the Northern Territory actually owning a croc as a pet is really common is it? Uh, yeah yeah they actually farm crocodile farms right will actually um, um, encourage people to take them home wow and they're only allowed to keep them until they get to a certain size okay before they get dangerous and then right. they return them to the crocodile farm okay 
So, so once they get, no one could own uh, a crocodile as big as Charlie as a pet. Um, uh, no, you can, but that would take a very special person to be able to do that. <laughs> so they do have regulations preventing people from keeping them a certain size. I will say they don't make a very friendly pet. No, I mean, I... Charlie's been raised by us and we love and look after him every day. But when we go to feed him, quite often he targets us more so than the food right. we're offering that him. That instinct <laughs> kicks in, Oh, right? very much so. Yeah. We have a lot of beautiful reptiles here and, and they're very easy to handle and very trustworthy. Some of our bigger goannas and even venomous snakes are very calm. Right. But he's always thinking and he's always looking for an angle and yeah. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't trust him. Okay, no. so when you go to feed him, you're on a special little um, platform that keeps you safe, keeps Very you away so. from him, yep. and I guess you're the only person that's allowed in there, I am. someone like myself or any kids, they can't go in there obviously. No, no, yeah. no, no, not unless the kids really annoy us. No, 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 no children in there, sorry, not allowed to do that. Um, no, we, we do, uh, right now we do. Charlie's new home will include a, a bigger feeding area, It'll be a bit safer for the okay. keepers. Right now, um, uh, because I'm in charge of the place, I suppose I'm responsible and, right. and I've helped to raise him. So I, uh, I, I've got a better idea of how he handles. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, you're right, I will be on a platform and I'll be making him exercise quite a bit when he goes for his food. We okay. only, well, at the moment, we only feed him once a week. Okay. So during the winter months, we, we'll only feed him once a fortnight. Right. Because when the temperatures cool down around here, the, cooler these cold blood animals get, the less encouraged they are to want to eat. Okay. And for us, that's not such a bad thing because reptiles are incredible. The more they eat, the faster they grow. Okay, yeah, so okay. as humans, we eat more, we grow in this way, right? <laughs> Whereas these guys, they grow this way. Yeah, okay. And, they, and so if you feed them a lot, they can actually grow really fast. Yeah, okay. And, and we're not ready for him to be that big just yet. Yep. But we are working on it. Yeah, mm, good. Now, speaking yeah. of these guys growing, how big will Charlie grow? So Charlie's going to, uh, can potentially reach sizes of up to five meters in length. Wow. So that would be like three or four people lying down end on end. Wow. Um, more importantly, what makes him more dangerous isn't necessarily his length, it's his weight. Okay. There are pythons and other snakes that grow bigger than that in the world, but these guys get really heavy and when they're fully grown, they can weigh as much as a car. Wow. And it's that weight that makes them dangerous. Okay. But the good news is, it's that weight that makes it very hard for a big crocodile to chase you on land. Yeah, you probably can't move too quick. No, so you don't see too many of these things running cross country trying to eat yep. people as they drive down the road. You know, yeah. that's that's why they stick to water and they hunt where their body is buoyant and they can float around. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. So I know that you do have some other crocs here. Yes, some I do. smaller crocs. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Now speaking of some of those smaller crocs, yes. should we go and have a look at some of them? Absolutely, and check them out? yeah, definitely. Maybe even get the chance to hold one. Yeah, you sure can. I can get, I've got a couple here. We've got one called Chopper. Chopper. So, yeah, Chopper, and he's He's pretty easy going, but I will say we have a special technique for keeping you safe. <laughs> That's a good thing because yeah. with a name like Chopper, yeah. I want to make sure I leave here with all my 10 fingers yeah, and yeah. toes. And he's earned that name too. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's sure. go check him out. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. all right, kids. Now, Peter has just gone and got uh, this little baby crocodile here. Now, I believe this is called Chopper. This is Chopper. All right. And is this the one that I'm going to hold? Yep, you sure are. <laughs> now, should I, be, should I be nervous? Um, well, he just seem to be looking at you pretty hungry, actually. But uh, no, I think you'll be okay because I'm pretty safe you don't fit inside his stomach. And as I was saying earlier, they're not very good at uh, chewing their food. So you're probably a little bit too big to be on the menu. Okay. And if he was to grab you and start trying to take a bite, he would just look like he was line dancing or something <laughs> like that. So not really effective at this age. Fantastic. Well, mm. I'm ready when you are. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is to let you hold this crocodile safely. I'm yep. just going to teach you something about them very quickly. They obviously do a very powerful jaw, all right? And he can give you a pretty nasty bite. This age, you can't eat you or you won't even lose a finger, but he can give you a nip, all right? Which is funny for us and everybody watching, but probably not for you. <laughs> not so, so, funny um, for me, so yeah. basically, his jaw is very, very long and it comes all the way back to about here somewhere. Okay. okay? So even though his mouth looks like it ends here, his jaw's here. So, what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to hold his mouth closed like that. So, it doesn't look like I'm holding his mouth, but I yeah. actually am. And because all of the strength in their jaw is designed to close that mouth and faster than you can blink your eye. Uh, there's not a lot of um, design put into reopening it again. Right. So when you hold it like that, it takes two fingers to hold a crocodile. So wow. Like, probably even do that with the bigger crocodile. It's just that while you're holding him, he would shake and you wouldn't be able to hold onto the crocodile. Fair enough. This one's a bit easier. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to turn him around and give you okay. a chance to have a bit of a touch. So you can rest your hand underneath there if you like. It's beautiful, isn't it? Underneath, we describe it as feeling like a marshmallow. It's very, yeah, very it soft. Very soft. Oh, isn't it? And I can tell you the big one feels like that too. And all you do then is just put one hand up under his front legs here. There you go. And you're just holding him. There you are. Look there at that. Go. 
So right. this is also a crocodile which is very, very used to this type of work. Okay. Uh, all of our animals here are handled on a daily basis. We have quite a few of them so we can rotate them. Um, and they're very calm and relaxed because they know what's happening. Yeah. So if you were to do this with a, a wild crocodile, it would never sit that well, still. Well, I can tell you now, Peter, mm. I will not try this with a wild <laughs> crocodile. I can only do this because I, I trust you yeah. and I know that I'm very safe. But hey, kids, he is very calm. Um, surprisingly, I'm very calm, which is a good thing. Yes. Um, and you can see that he's just, he's very relaxed. He's way softer than I expected. Yes, they do that. Really he's a bit it. like a marshmallow under there. I feel like a really expensive handbag. A really yeah. expensive handbag or a marshmallow, <laughs> neither of which uh, I enjoy much of. <laughs> <laughs> Now these guys are, um, uh, this one's only quite young, and in fact the scariest thing that this crocodile will do, it doesn't involve his teeth, it involves his ability to make a sound. Okay. So when these younger crocodiles are afraid, they'll actually make a wow. sound, which is a lot worse to hear in the Australian outback than okay. it is here, it's quite cute, because that's actually how they call their mum. Right. So when a baby croc starts going wow. they're actually going mum, 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 when they're calling for help, yep. it doesn't have to be his mum, it can be any female saltwater croc right. in the region. And they make that, that distress call, the females come to their aid. Okay. They kind of have to, because even though they're gonna to grow to be one of the biggest and most dangerous reptiles that we know here in Australia, um, I think on average they say only about one out of every 70 crocodiles born will make it to adulthood. Wow. So a lot of crocodiles are eaten um, and, and before they ever reach those bigger sizes. Okay. Yeah, because they're quite helpless when they're young. Okay, yeah. now what uh, kind of uh, prey would these guys have? What would it eat? What would eat these guys? Yeah. Well, um, actually, they, they, when they're small, because this guy's about four years old now. He's four? He's four. Wow. So their growth can be quite slow. Now, in a crocodile farm, he would grow much faster because you'd be feeding him a lot more yeah. to grow faster. Uh, this guy here, um, when he was young, he would have been preyed upon by large fish. Uh, there would be, um, even there are even some bigger insects, definitely lizards like uh, goannas, okay. water monitors and stuff yeah, would eat okay. these guys. Yeah. And then as they get bigger, there are birds will go after them. And, and then other crocodiles. So as they get larger, their, their biggest threat is actually other, particularly male crocodiles in their region. Yeah. So they are fair game for anything like that. Fair enough. Mm. All right, so this um, chopper is a saltwater croc. Correct. Okay, now I know that you've got some freshwater crocs here. Now what is the difference? Is there a difference in appearance between there salties is. and freshies? Yeah, there is. Um, they're, when you know what you're looking for and you've got two of them side by side, it's really, really obvious. Okay. Because the freshwater crocs actually have a very, very long, thin, narrow snout compared to croc saltwater crocs have a slightly wider snout. Right, okay? Okay. But that's only when you're looking uh, at two of them side by side. Right. When you don't have that reference, the best way to tell the difference yeah. is actually here on the back of their head. Okay. So this saltwater crocodile here actually has a small armour plate just here right. and skin here and here. That tells me this is a saltwater crocodile. Right. If he was a freshwater crocodile, the armor plating would continue right up the back and would go all the way to the back of the head with no break in it. There you go. Yeah. That's fascinating. Yeah. Now, I'd love to know what's the difference, and this is mainly for our fans that are watching from America. Yes. What's the difference between salties and freshies in Australia and alligators? Okay, well this one will eat you and an alligator won't. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Come to Australia if you want to get eaten by a croc. Alligators are, um, I'm not saying an alligator wouldn't try because people have died from alligators. Right. Alligators tend to have a broad, much broader snout and their body is, or their mouth is designed so they tend to crush mussels and turtle shells much more successfully than they do. Okay. They tend to grab their prey and they tend to drown it and they will roll but they do tend to drown their prey. Whereas a saltwater croc tends to come in hard, grab and shake their food. They're much more violent about it. So they're more likely to go for bigger things, whereas alligators tend to stick more for smaller stuff that's not quite as, I'm not saying they won't go for something bigger, yep. but they are designed more to go for smaller prey items. The best way to tell the difference when you're looking at them visually is that in crocodiles, you can actually see both sets of teeth. So when they close their mouth, you can see top and bottom teeth like that. But when you're looking at an alligator, you can actually only see the top set of teeth pointing downwards. There you go. Yeah, so that's the best way to tell the difference when you're not comparing it. Okay, yeah. so it's the teeth, 
Yes. And the, the width the, of the, the nose. Yes, that's right. The width of their head is, it is much shorter and broader in a, uh, an alligator. Cool. And, and alligators are, um, that's why you see a lot of alligators uh, in zoos and you see a lot of movies where people running across alligators' backs and stuff like that because <laughs> they are probably a bit more trustworthy and they're a lot calmer than yeah. a, a saltwater crocodile. Yeah, is. I don't yeah. think I'll be trying to run across an alligator or no. a crocodile. No, I, I'm, I'm not game to do it. <laughs> Very comfortable holding uh, a four-year-old crocodile, but yeah. I think that's probably where the... Uh, where I start and finish with, uh, with my handling of crocodiles. And he's pretty used to it too, so he's, he's, he's very is, tame. He's pretty friendly. Chopper doesn't live up to his name, he's very... Tame. No, but that will change. So when they're young, they're very meek and mild, so they're yeah. very concerned about everything else eating them, so they're quite timid. But as he grows, his attitude changes. Okay. So he then becomes a teenager. Right. And when he's about a metre and a half long, he will become defiant. Right. So he'll start to think, well, hang on a minute, I'm an apex predator. I'm not afraid of anything anymore right. and I'm going to start defending myself and looking at other things as food. Right. So they do tend to become more aggressive and, and uh, they are much less trustworthy when they're bigger. Plus they're a lot heavier to hold on to. Well that's, um, that's really sad to learn because I'm yeah. becoming quite attached to Chopper <laughs> and I thought we were becoming good mates here. But if I was to come back when he's about a metre and a half long, I wouldn't uh, him. he's not going to say, hey Ozzy, welcome back, thanks for coming to visit me again. He's going to that's exactly, what he's, that's exactly what he's going to say. He's going to say, hi Ozzy, thanks for visiting. Come on in here and have a swim, mate. Uh, that's how these guys work. And he'd see me they, as food. They pretend to be very calm. And, and Charlie lies on his platform and children look at him and he just sits and they go, oh. And then when they look away, he goes, boom, against the glass. Yeah. He, he waits until you're not paying attention. They're very cunning hunters. Very, uh, cunning. very good. Well, I can't wait to see um, Charlie get some food. Oh yeah, Charlie in action is something to watch. Yeah. Mm. All right, kids. Now, this is the, the moment I've been waiting for. I know that Pete loves this part of his job. Once a week, it. once a week during the, the once summer months, once a fortnight during the winter, I That's believe. Right. Yep. And we're gonna feed old Charlie here some chicken. We are. So this is chicken we've prepared already. So this has been cut down, it's pieces, chicken pieces. Okay. If I gave him a whole chicken, he would grab it, he would crush it and swallow it down in a few seconds flat. Right. Which is okay for him. But what we're trying to do at the moment is we're trying to get Charlie to exercise a little bit. Okay. So he can't do a lot of exercise, so a smaller enclosure is not a problem for him because they are a relatively lazy creature. Yeah. Over-exercising can cause problems, but right. that doesn't mean we don't want him moving at all. Of course. So once a week when we feed him, we tend to get him jumping for his food, make him work for it. Okay. That way it just, uh, that way it just gives him a bit of... Uh, I guess get up and go and, yep. and helps exercise and get those joints moving. Very and good. He really likes his food, so he doesn't muck around with it. Either, I so. don't imagine he does. No. So I'm going to let right. you get in there and do your thing. Fantastic. I will. I'm going to stay on the safety of this side of the glass, yeah. I think. I wish I could too. <laughs> and he really knows what's going on. go. Look how excited he is. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at this. Yeah, Charlie's hungry. He's ready for a feed. Kids, check this out. Look at that bit of chicken. All right, so you can see Peter there. He's just just waving the food around just so that Charlie can get a bit of exercise. Look at that. Hey, mate. Oh, wow. It disappears pretty quickly, doesn't it? That's gone, just like that, kids. All right, you'll notice. Oh, at the moment, he doesn't care if I've got chicken on me or not. He's just looking to eat whatever's in the way, which would be so me. You want to keep those fingers well okay. and out of there, please. Buddy. He's always very excited at first. Calms down pretty quickly. <laughs> All right, Charlie, thing. here we go. You ready? Good boy. Oh, wow. There you go. And, and jump, jump, jump. Just like that, it's gone. Okay. All right. Here we go, Charlie. Another one. Here comes another piece, kids. Check this out. Okay, I'm trying to get Charlie to turn away, away from me. <laughs> Although sometimes that's difficult. I think Charlie thinks I'm a leg of chicken. <laughs> this way, buddy. This way. Yep. You'll notice Charlie's not interested in the chicken. Yeah, he wants your arm. He does. So this is our last piece right now. We'll make him work for it. Maybe this way a bit, buddy. Look at, this way, Look at him go. Look at him go. Right now, right now he's far more interested in me than Focus he is in the chicken. Focus on the chicken. Focus on the chicken, Charlie. Okay, turn around, Charlie. Turn around. Whoa, there you go, buddy. Here nice. we go. Ready? Ah, oh, and he got it. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Look at him go. There you go. Hey, buddy. Now, Charlie missed that last piece, but what will happen is, right now he's hunting on instinct because okay. he knows I'm there and I feed him. What he's going to do in a moment is, once he realizes this session is over, he's going to turn around and then he'll start using sense of touch and he'll start moving around under the water and he'll find that piece of chicken that he dropped. Yeah, right. And then he'll, he'll eat that. How so, cool. All right, Pete. Well, you've given us lots of information. I'm right. sure the kids at home have loved learning all about crocs. Excellent. I've loved learning about them. I've yeah, loved good. holding the crocs. Kids, you know where to come if you want to learn more about crocs, if you want to hold or touch some of these beautiful animals. <laughs> I think for now, he's, he's not we, might, to come out. <laughs> we might just leave Charlie to find that fourth piece of chicken yeah. and we'll take off. Kids, Thank hope you. you've enjoyed the episode. Pete, thanks very much for it's your time again. welcome. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you on our next video. Until That's then, awesome. stay keen. See you later, guys. If you haven't already, make sure you get a great up to help you hit that subscribe button. That way you won't miss out on any of the new and exciting videos that we put out. Speaking of new and exciting, if there's a video that you'd love to see Aussie do, make sure you send us a message on our socials, on Facebook or Instagram at Aussie for Kids. We'll see you again soon kids, and until then, stay keen. Oh, and by the way, did you happen to find the hidden Aussie icon in that video? Yeah, make sure you look closely because they're in every single video. That's right. Stay keen, kids. Aussie, 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 oi. Aussie is a friend of yours, and he's a friend of.